All right, so pasta al limone, a very simple dish with a few simple ingredients, which we must prepare simply. First, we gotta peel and thinly slice one large fresh clove of garlic, roughly or finely chop some fresh parsley. I'm not gonna tell you how to do it. Who am I, the parsley police? And of course, the star of the show, a lemon, which we're gonna roll on our countertop with firmness so that it's easier to juice. And again, since this is such a minimalist dish, it does benefit from homemade pasta, which I'm going to make entirely by hand, so you don't have to. I'm beating three eggs and a little pinch of kosher salt into a mountain of flour, mixing it until a slurry forms, then tossing it together until a ball of dough forms, and kneading it continuously for seven to 10 minutes until it springs back when poked, indicating that it has sufficient gluten development to give us a chewy al dente end product. Wrap in plastic wrap and let rest at room temperature for 30 minutes before retrieving and rolling out. To do this, we are generously flouring both the pasta and our work surface, and using nothing but a rounded piece of wood and elbow grease, we are rolling it out to a thickness of about one millimeter, which we are then going to generously flour and fold like an accordion whose folds do not overlap. Does that make any sense? Basically, you don't want your folds overlapping because it will make your pasta kinky, and not in a fun way. Then with our very sharpest knife, we are cutting into nice wide tagliatelle, or however you want. Who am I, the pasta police? Then one at a time, we're gonna unfold them, dust them with flour, and twist them into nests, again in an effort to prevent pasta kinks. Rinse and repeat with the remaining strands, and there you have it, homemade pasta. You could make this by hand, or you could just buy some box pasta. If you do, just remember you get what you pay for. You want a rough textured pasta that's been cut with bronze dyes. This is gonna release more starch into the cooking water, which is essential for getting an emulsified sauce. And again, to increase starch content, we wanna cook the pasta in just about as little water as we possibly can, just enough to cover it. The water will get starchier and our resultant sauce will get silkier. Also, make sure that you stir it around when initially dropping into the pot so that it does not stick together. Once you got your pasta cooking, it's time to get started on the al limone part. Into a high-walled saute pan goes a few glugs of high-quality olive oil, maybe two or three tablespoons, and we're adding our garlic, about a teaspoon of chili flakes, and the zest of one lemon while the oil is still cold, which is gonna help them cook more slowly and prevent them from burning. We're also gonna add a couple twists of freshly ground black pepper so that it lightly toasts in the oil and has enhanced pepperiness. These are gonna cook for about three to five minutes, so you wanna start doing this about three to five minutes before your pasta's done, because once the garlic is just lightly blonde, not browned, we're gonna start dumping in our very al dente pasta. This pasta is about a minute to two minutes shy of its recommended cooking time. If you are using fresh pasta, we're boiling that for no more than 30 seconds, just enough to get it partially cooked, and then we're finished cooking it in the sauce. All these recipes are gonna be for about a half a pound of pasta. First up, the OG Italian method. If you're able, this is a good time to give things a toss. This is both gonna evenly cook the pasta and aerate the sauce a bit. If pan tossing is not yet in your skill set, just agitate it a bunch by shaking the pan around and moving the pasta around with a pair of tongs. Now at this point, over medium low heat, we're gonna add either the juice of one half or one whole lemon, depending on how lemony you want things to get, a nice extra glove of extra virgin olive oil, about a quarter cup of our chopped parsley, maybe two to three ounces of finely grated Parmesan cheese, give everybody a stir, and then we're gonna add the single most important ingredient, our still boiling pasta cooking water, starting with about a quarter cup's worth and adding as necessary. This is what's gonna emulsify our sauce from a thick, oily, broken mess into a smooth, creamy, luscious sauce. Just add a little splash at a time, give it a vigorous stir, and see how it looks. Is it too thick? Add more pasta water. Is it too thin? Add some more cheese. Ultimately, you want the sauce to be a little thinner than where you think it should be because it's going to thicken as it cools. So once you've hit the sweet spot, this should take no more than one to two minutes. It's time to twist up and serve. And this this guy's gonna be garnished simply with a little bit of extra freshly grated parmigiano reggiano, a sprinkle of parsley, and some bonus grated lemon zest. And there you have it, one of life's very few remaining pleasures, a fast and easy to make Italian classic, an upgrade, if you will, of pasta al olio. But there are obviously different versions of this pasta. Let's start with the Americanized one. This adds both a generous pat of butter to our slow cooking garlic, along with about a half a cup of heavy cream. This is obviously not only going to add a whole lot of richness to our finished dish, it is basically a cheat code to make a perfectly emulsified sauce. From there, the procedure is very much the same. Heat over medium-low heat, add our parsley, our cheese, 
Give it a little stir, add the juice of one lemon, and cook over medium to medium low heat for one to three minutes or until the pasta is done cooking and the sauce has become thick and glossy. But even this sauce definitely benefits from some hot pasta water, both to help emulsify and if you need to, thin the sauce. Oh yeah, did I mention season generously with kosher salt? Be sure, be sure you do that. Twist up, garnish, and serve. And obviously this tastes really, really good, but I gotta be honest, it's a little too rich for me. The heavy cream makes for a very luscious sauce, but I think it cuts into the sharpness of the lemon too much. So I wanted to find a way to achieve the same creaminess without losing the flavor, and the answer laid in eggs. Pun absolutely intended. We're gonna borrow some concepts from Carbonara and make a slurry out of one egg, one egg yolk, a tablespoon of cream, and about three ounces of grated Parmesan cheese. Set that aside, do all the same things that we did before. Then after adding the lemon and the pasta cooking water, we're gonna add our slurry off the heat. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with scrambled egg pasta. Maybe even take it off the burner just to be safe. Keep it moving and add a little bit more pasta cooking water if you need to thin it out, and all that residual heat is going to gently cook the egg into a positively decadent lemony sauce. Of course, you wanna season generously to taste with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. Otherwise, I will call the pepper police. And we're off to the races with this meatless lemony carbonara hybrid thing that tastes a whole lot better than I just made it sound. It's definitely far from traditional, a little fussier to make, but it's an effective way to get the creaminess without the cream. Not that we're necessarily watching our carbs here, I mean, this is, after all, my third bowl of pasta today. But it is totally worth the calories, it is an absolute celebration of lemon and pasta together. I hope you guys give it a try for yourselves, let me know what you think. It has been a really, really tough week, and I think we could all use a little pasta, or even better, a lot of pasta.